Hi everyone, thanks very much for joining the webinar. I hope you're all doing okay. In this session, I'm going to be introducing you to some brilliant, simple on the plot coding activities brought to you by Cubo Coding. And these are activities that you can use with your pupils or children wherever you are, which are perfect for introducing the concepts of coding, uh, as well as being hugely cross-curricular. All you're going to need access to is paper onto which you can either uh, print coding tag tiles, and I'll be explaining what these coding tag tiles are in more detail shortly. So you'll either need to print the coding tag tiles, or if you don't have a printer, you can simply draw the coding tag tiles as well. Uh, you'll also need to download the free activity guide, the link to which is detailed in the notes section of this video. So you should be able to access that from there. If not, please do get in touch with us and we'll make sure that you've got access to that. Um, and that is it. That's all you're going to simply need. Just those printed coding tattails or drawn coding tattails and the activity uh, booklet itself. Okay, so to introduce you to what Cubo coding is all about, I'm first of all going to introduce you to the usual robot that you would be using uh, to fully explain where all of this uh, comes from. I'll, of course, then talk you through um, how you can do this for yourselves at home, but Cubo is great for demonstrating what this is all about. And of course, it's great to have the robot. Uh, if you do have access to it or you want to get access to it, we can uh, help you on that as well. That's always great for properly consolidating the learning. Um, but there's lots you can do at home with those materials that you, you do have access to as a starting point. OK, so I'm just going to switch my view uh, to the video now. So I'm going to introduce you to Cubo, our robot. So hopefully you can now see that all OK now. So Cubo is this little cute robot here and the way that um, Cubo, uh, Cubo works uh, in terms of how you control or program it, it's a little bit different to what you'd usually be doing with programming software uh, on a laptop or a tablet. The same principles, but we're actually uh, creating the code or program for the robots physically. And that is by using these coding tag tiles here. Okay, so it's these tag tiles which the uh, robots can read and then either act out directly or memorize to then act out for us. So this is great for real, uh, a, a real hands-on experience of coding and does also help in limiting uh, the screen time for our pupils, which obviously has its benefits uh, too. So again, remember, I'm going to explain how you can do some of this without the need for the actual robot itself, uh, but it's useful to use Cubo to, to help explain the concept and how it works off first of all. Okay, so most of the, the lesson plans and activities that are um, there for you to use with Cubo, they're actually all based around getting Cubo from point A to point B in different scenarios. And what I'm working with here, this is a specific activity mat, which is all based around getting Cubo to go from point A to point B within the grounds of a school. So that is the theme of this particular activity mat um, itself. And it might be as a starting point that I want to get Cubo to go from point A of the edge of the school grounds here to go into the pavement, across the roads, and then onto the car park to head on home. Okay, so that might be the simple challenge that I've got to get Cubo to do. And the very first basic level of coding, how I can get Cubo to do that, is by creating what we call a route. Okay, so I can create a route using these directional coding tag tiles to get Cubo to go where I want to go. So also this one would be, sorry, this one would be going forward. This one will be turning to the uh, right and then going forwards. I've also got one here for turning uh, left and then going forwards. And I can put these together to create a full route for Cubo to fall. So I'm going to do exactly that now. As I said, I'm starting off at the edge of the school grounds here. Then I want Cubo to turn to the left and then go forwards. Then I want Cubo to turn to the right and go forwards, to head towards the zebra crossing. Then forward again to go over that zebra crossing. Then we're turning to the left and going forwards. And then one more forward to take Cubo into the car park here. So that's the route I want Cubo to follow. And the way it works with actually Cubo the robot, there's a sensor or a reader in the bottom of Cubo here, 
which can read the chips within these tag tiles to act out what we're asking them to do. So all I need to do now is simply put Cubo on top of that first curling tag tile, and they're gonna start following that exactly as I've asked it to do, as you can see here. Now heading over that zebra crossing to cross the roads. One more left turn, forward, and then forward one more time into that car park. Okay, so Cubo has successfully uh, followed that route for us, and that is, uh, your very first um, uh, basic part of coding. What we're doing here straight away is creating an algorithm or, of course, a set of step-by-step -step instructions to get the robot or get Kubo to do what we want them to do. Okay, so that is one of the very first levels of Kubo. So hopefully that's making sense how it all works together and how we use it. As I say, I want to now talk you through how you can actually start to do uh, some of this for yourself at home with those materials you've got. Kubo is capable of a lot more complex levels of programming, and I'll come on to that shortly, but now let's have a talk about how we can do that for ourselves. We're going to change the view again. So, the way we can do this at home is basically we actually become Kubo the robots ourselves, and we become the programmer as well. And the way we do that is by using the tag tiles in a similar way, but now we can either print or draw them, like I mentioned before. So what I've got here is a couple of examples of that. So within the activity booklet itself, you've actually got templates for all of those same coding tag tiles, which you can print and then use. Or if you don't have access to a printer or you don't want to print, you could, of course, just simply draw the tag tiles like I have done here. So you've got a couple of different options on that. And the way it would then work is we might be working in pairs, okay? So one person, uh, one pupil as the programmer, and one person acting as Cubo the robot out in the uh, the house or in the garden, depending on what bet works best for you in the, uh, the space that you've got to work with at home. And we can set a challenge that we've got to get Cubo to do. Uh, so remember all of this is detailed in the activity pack as well, but you can do whatever challenges you want. And it might be that I want to get Cubo to go from the front door into the living room, something as simple as that. And we could go about that in a couple of different ways. We could, first of all, as the coder, just lay out those coding tag tiles on the floor in the correct order to get Kubo to follow a route for us. Or we could do it in a slightly different way, that if the coder is sat or stood somewhere where Kubo the robot can see them, we can make it so that they're not allowed to speak to Kubo to tell them where to go, but they simply just need to hold up the tag tiles, like so. So without speaking, but just holding up the instructions or the code for where they want Kubo to get to. Simple as that to start off with our very first uh, algorithms or code using those tag tiles. So again, hopefully that makes sense, but Kubo is capable of a lot more complex programming. So we'll go on to that now. So let's just change our view again back to Kubo the robot. So again, I'll use Kubo to explain and then come back to how you can do this for yourselves at home. So what we did there, of course, was creating a full route mapped out for Kubo to follow. But the next step in this would be creating what we call a function. And this is basically a line of code. So this is what you would be usually doing in standard programming software, uh, icon-based or text-based. You're always coding in sequences or lines of code. And we can do exactly that with Kubo by using these tag tiles. So imagine these as start recording and stop recording. And then we can place our other coding tag tiles within between these, and we can get Kubo to memorize and then act out those lines of code. So hopefully that makes sense, but again, we'll demonstrate. So this time I'm gonna create a different piece of code. So this time, rather than routing it out, I'm just doing it in a straight line of code like so. So I'm gonna say, go forwards, go forwards, then turn it to the left and go forwards, let's put that back there, and then turn to the right and go forwards, and that's it. So that's the full line of code that I want to get Kubo to uh, memorize and then act out. So to get Kubo to memorize this, I'm again simply placing him on top, and he's gonna start running over these tag tiles and memorizing them one by one. So he's memorizing that line or sequence of codes that we've put together, got to the end, stops recording, and that is now stored in Kubo. So to get Kubo to act this out, we can now use this tag tile. So this is our play tag tile, which I can again just simply place on the mat here. 
put Kubo on top, and I should map out this line of code, which should be forwards, forwards, then turn to the left and move forwards, and then turn to the right and move forward one more time. Perfect, exactly like that. So that is how we use that uh, function type of coding using lines of code like we would do in any normal programming and get Kubo to act out. So again, how do we now do that for ourselves at home? So same method again, we are using those tag tiles, uh, but this time printed or drawn. So you can see what I've got here is a start recording and stop recording tag tile printed out to use. So we could now go to a completely different challenge, getting Kubo to go from point A to point B. But the fir first of all, someone again goes first as the, uh, the coder and they can create this time their line of code within their start and stop recording tag tile. So it might be on top of a table service or on the floor, placing their other um, tag tiles to get Kubo to do what they want to do within those. And now again, Kubo can act it out. But the rule is this time, they're not allowed to try and plot it out as a route first of all. They've got to go straight to thinking, what is the correct sequence of code? I've got to put within those start and stop recording to get Kubo to go where I want it to go. When they are ready, they're happy they've got their line of code correct. We can then show the play uh, tag tile to our uh, partner acting as Kubo to get them to act out our codes. If they get to where we want them to go, great. If they uh, don't, there's something wrong with that sequence of code. We just have to go back and debug or change to make it better. So we've got to look back at that line of code we created. It's already there, stored for, memorized, but we just might need to debug it and change it to make it uh, better. Okay, so hopefully that is all making sense. Um, just a, another couple of things I want to introduce you to before we wrap up. So there were just a few tag tiles um, that we can use. But again, Kubo is capable of going on to a lot more complex level of programs. So the next thing that we might introduce is repetition or loops. Now this is something that's used a lot within coding, um, getting robots or programs to repeat actions all the time. And we can do exactly that with these tag tiles. So this is open loop into which we can place a number. So it might be that we want them to repeat something three times. We would then put the tag tiles that we want them to repeat within these, and this would close the loop. So we can do coding in that form. We've also got lots of different actions like these. So we can actually get Kubo to go forward three times. We can get them to do certain degree turns, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. We can change the power level that Kubo is moving at or even do U-turns. There's lots and lots of different ways in which we can control Kubo. And again, you've got the templates for those tag tiles within that activity booklet. Um, so I definitely encourage you to download and take a look at everything you've got to work with, uh, all the activities you've got in there as well. And there's lots and lots of support for you to be using. Okay, so hopefully that has all made sense. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, just a couple of little other points to go through. Um, when you start to work with this, if you've got any questions at all, please, please do get in touch with us. You can reach us at our main email address, which is up on the screen now, which is info at creative-hut.com. Uh, if you do want to find out more information about everything that Creative Hut do and how we can help, please visit our website. If you are actually interested in finding out more about getting hold of Kubo the robots, we can, of course, help with that as well. So please do ask any questions. And we'd love to see examples of what you're doing, what you're um, acting out with uh, the Kubo coding at home. So if you do ever want to post any photos or videos of your efforts, please also do those um, and tag us in our, our social media channels, which are on the screen now as well. Uh, we will be running a lot more um, videos, webinars, tutorials on all sorts of other activities you can carry out. So please look out for those on our website and social media as well. And we'll hopefully see you online again soon. But thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye for now.